Hello everyone, welcome to Central Crossing High School for the district final in Division II girls basketball. Granville Blue Aces. Nice win in their last game on Wednesday as they took down London 52 to 18. Uh, and they take on tonight North Union. They got a win against Heath on the 28th of February. Uh, and they won uh, 54 to 51 in that game. So we've got the Granville Blue Aces and North Union, the Wildcats doing battle tonight here at Central Crossing High School for the district final, district championship in Division II girls basketball. Will Ford here with you with Storied Rival Sports Media, live on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate you making us part of your evening. A little bit of, of an earlier game here tonight. We'll start here at about 5 o'clock. Um, but also a, a big shout out to our crew tonight. We've got Sean down on the sidelines uh, running some camera for us. He's filming highlights for this game, uh, but it will also cut to him at different points in the game. We've got our guy Parker running the main cam, uh, and then Caden Casey running the iPad, showing you different camera angles tonight. We only have two camera angles, but he's, he's doing God's work up here, so we appreciate him. Uh, but Will Ford here with you, um, and this is gonna be a, a good game. Uh, Granville really took it to uh, London a couple days ago they were up 31 to 2 at halftime and it was really all thanks to that that full court press the the full court man pressure that they they put on the Red Raiders uh, throughout that game but it was especially prominent in that first half uh, for so many turnovers uh, and Harper Ann Arena finished with 23 points in that game she hit several threes from the top of the key and uh, they were dominant throughout North Union, 13-point win against Heath. Uh, and I'll tell you what, they're excited for this game. Um, their, um, their head coach made some comments after uh, after Granville had won, and they found out they, that that was their matchup, they, them taking on Granville. Had some, uh, some comments saying, you know, this is what we want. We're not afraid. We want the number one seed. And obviously that's the mentality you have to have um, when you um, – get into these moments here in the state tournament um, but if you didn't tune into the game last week or haven't checked out our, our interview with head coach Tate Moore of Granville um, on YouTube Facebook uh, the links out on Twitter as well if you haven't checked it out um, we'll play part of that interview here uh, this evening uh, pregame basically talking about his move to Barstool Sports at the end. Taking time to to join us and just hop on a podcast for a few minutes to not only talk about you and, and the story with Barstool, but also the, the great basketball team that you have this year. Um, you guys are, are 23 and one and you're playing number 10 London in the Central District uh, semifinal tonight, which is going to be a good one. But I want to start with kind of this story, I guess, because this uh, this tournament run has been dubbed as the last dance part two. Um, so it's your final quest to, to win a state championship, the first one in Granville's uh, history. Um, but now you're you're going to be working for Barstool full time after the season. So, I mean, first off, uh, for people that are just now beginning to to follow you and um, and the content that you put out and your personality, your story. I mean, how did you first get in the door at Barstool and then you get a DM from you know, Prez, Dave Portnoy to, you know, hey, you want to go full time? And then now, now here we are. I mean, what what has this whole journey been like for you, man? Yeah, well, first of all, shout out. Thanks for shouting out the girls. Shout out to our seniors, our senior class, Harper, Aaliyah, Taylor, Haley, and Hannah, um, four-time league champions, big game tonight. Um, so I'm definitely interested in talking about all the Barstool stuff, but shout out to our girls, and we got a big one tonight. I'm pumped for them. Um, as for the Barstool stuff, so I've kind of kept two very separate lives for the last like five years. Um, I've been blogging uh, under a cartoon, um, behind a cartoon for the last five years um, for Barstool. And then I've been coaching and teaching and I really don't tell anyone and I really don't mix the two. Um, but then the opportunity presented itself at the end of January, beginning of February, um, where Dave had kind of seen some of the things I'd done and asked me to go full time. And I, um, I think it's the right opportunity um, to take a chance right now in my life. And so I'm super excited about that. Um, and then, so basically when, when I told the girls about it, I said, look, like we can keep the two separate, like I've done for five years and no one will know. And, and we'll just, you know, go try and win a state championship. Like our goal is, um, or do you guys want to talk about it? And 
that that's where this whole last dance and and barstool previews and everything has come from is our girls are super pumped about it they contacted dave to make t-shirts and they want me to talk about them and they all sign their permission slips and got it. so i love that it seems like it's tate's last dance but it's harper haley you know taylor Aaliyah, hannah's last dance and, and they've just allowed me to use my platform now, it's always been your dream to to be a, a high school teacher, a high school basketball coach. I mean, like, why was it so important for you to like, once you were approached this, with this opportunity, I mean, you said like, hey, like, my one condition is I want to finish this basketball season. And then you, you wrote in your blog, like, if not, it would be a different form of resignation. And you wouldn't you wouldn't continue with Barstool. I mean, like, I mean, why was it so important for you to to finish the season with the girls? Yeah, I think, and that's credit to Dave um, for understanding my situation. Um, all I ever wanted to do was coach and teach. I do know that once in a lifetime opportunities don't come along very often. And I feel like the ability to move to Chicago and work for a sports media company where my job is going to be to talk in, in comedic ways about the Browns, Buckeyes, Cavs, like people don't get to do that. So I, when given that opportunity, I had to take it. With that being said, it, I would never be able to live with myself. This was th these DMs were happening during the JV game of our game at Utica, um, and I'm sitting there and no one has any clue with what's going on. And I DM Dave and I'm like, "Yes, I do want to go full time, but I need to finish this season." Um, so, and he was like, "Yeah, no rush, do your thing." Um, so that's a huge credit to him for allowing me to do it. But yeah, if I if uh, he said, no, you have to start tomorrow, then that would have been um, unfortunately a no, because how could you quit on your team that's given you so much? Right. Yeah. You, you touched on the conversation that you had with the girls about the whole thing, like when you first brought it up. I mean, what was it like? Was it emotional? Was there I mean, like, were there tears involved? Like, because obviously you're getting ready to enter this this stretch run, playoff run, tournament time. You want to win a state championship. I mean, what was that that conversation like with the coaches and the team when you first, you know, brought it to them? Uh, yeah. So what was crazy about that was it was actually the morning of the league championship game before we got on the bus that I had to call the team meeting because um, obviously Dave tweeted about it the night before, and I knew that people were starting to piece it together. Um, but I wasn't aware of how many people knew or what they knew. So I called the team meeting. I practiced my speech all morning. Um, I met with the coaches before I went in. And I thought the reaction was going to be not negative, but more less supportive than it was. Um, but from the time I told my assistant coaches, they were like, holy cow, that's crazy. We didn't even know. Yes, go do it. And then I go into the locker room and there's already some people crying. I'm getting teary eyed. And I'm like, wait, do you guys already know? And they're like, yes, we know. We read everything, blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like going through my speech that I rehearsed and I'm like trying to like kind of win them over and be like, hey, we're going to do this together. Like, I know I'm leaving, but I'm not quitting. And um, out of the clouds, like Taylor, one of our seniors, who's the best, like got up, gave me a hug, was like, go do this. Like, we support you. They like pointed their atten my attention to our board. And uh, one of the Barstool employees' names was on there as, like, someone who's not invited to our championship celebration. And they had written, like, do it for Ohio State on there. So um, the speech, I was super nervous, super sad to give it. And then afterwards, I, it, I felt like a million dollars because, like, the girls that I – the only people I cared about responses were so positive. Yeah, that's that's incredible, man. Now, you, you mentioned a couple of the seniors like uh, Harper, Leah, Taylor, Hannah, Haley. They will have all finish their their high school careers. A perfect 52 and 0 like in the home gym at Granville, which is in, uh, just unbelievable. I mean, they're good kids. You know, they work hard. They're good players, obviously. But like, what is the work that they've put in over the years meant to you? But then also the program, you know, over the years? Yeah, I don't have great words to describe the feeling um we came in together like the plan was to be at granville for long term i came in with those five as freshmen we've done it together and now we're going to exit together and the idea that as a collective group we did not lose one time in the gym is something that i think is special now but like just thinking 20 years in advance or when a lot of those girls get inducted into the granville hall of fame Never losing in Granville. I've, I've never heard 52 and 0. Um, yeah. 
and and it and honestly, it's all them. Those they're their best friends. They're really good basketball players. Our leadership this year, uh, and we've had great leaders in the past, but this is the first time we're like our players could run our practice without me just because Grand Reno is barking at you, telling you it's not up to snuff. You know, Taylor Wareheim's grabbing my pen in the huddle and drawing on the whiteboard. And so these these girls get it, and uh, I think it's special now, and I think it's going to be even more special down the line. And so, you know, like I said, the 23 and record, 23 and one record this season, fourth straight Lincoln County League championship. You won your fifth straight coach of the year award for the for the LCL. But this group does seem like pretty special this year and obviously like more than capable of of going out and winning a state title. But I mean, what's impressed you most about the squad, you know, the seniors you've mentioned, but then the rest of the squad this year and just the incredible year that you've had to this point, but still not done. Yeah, I've loved all four teams um, that we've we've had here, and I think that it was no secret our first year together, we were loaded during the COVID year. We played 11 girls because we had 11 girls that could play varsity. I mean, Harper and Aaliyah were freshmen, and they were so talented. But we had girls go off to be the Big East player of the year in soccer. We had multiple girls go play Division One, Division Two basketball. That team was so good. And then so the next year, we lose a lot of really good players and it's like, Hey, is Granville going to be as good? And we were, we still had multiple college basketball players on the team. And, and we still were, I would, we were loaded the first two. And then the third year we lost a lot. We lost two, a thousand point scores. We lost two all Ohio wins. We lost two league player of the years. And we kind of like took it as a challenge. And that shout out to that senior class last year of Ava, Ella and Ella. It was like, Hey, we're still here. We still got a team. Um, so it was really fun to be a part of that. That That's one of my most fun years in all of coaching was last year of almost like proving the doubters wrong. Like, hey, we still got a team here. And then this year we lost Ava, Ella, and Ella. And really from, you know, the last three years, only Harper and Aaliyah remain. And then from the last, you know, two years, we had Taylor and we had Katie. And, and it was like, hey, can they do it again? Um, and we did. We we forced first team to go four for four in school history in the league, and now we're trying to do the same thing um, with the districts here this week. Uh, lastly, coach, and I really do appreciate you taking time out of your day today. But where can people find you? You know, drop the socials for us. Where can they find your blog and where where to follow you on all the socials? So that way, going forward, once you're full time, uh, they know where to to find Barstool Tate. Yeah. So Twitter or X is my big thing right now, which is at Barstool Tate. Um, I'm integrating my Instagram. Um, I've, it's always just been a personal Instagram, like with, for family and friends. But all of a sudden, sure. All, all of a sudden, I need it. But right now, I just changed my name um, to at Ohio Barstool Ohio Tate. But that's in the works. We're going to see if we can get the other handle. Um, the main thing is on the blog. I'm, I'm a writer, and I like to blog, and it's BarstoolSports.com, and my name's Ohio Tate. So. Um, starting, you know, when this tournament ends, hopefully, you know, after the state championship, uh, that's where you'll be able to, to see me doing more than uh, what I am now when I'm still obviously uh, focused on coaching. Welcome back, everybody, to Central Crossing High School, the district final here for Division II girls basketball, the Central District, Granville Blue Aces, the number one seed, and Number six seed, North Union, the Wildcats doing battle tonight. We're getting ready for the national anthem uh, as well as player introductions. And we'll have a familiar guest joining us again here in a few minutes after the national anthem. But thanks so much for joining us here live uh, on Facebook, X, and YouTube with Storied Rival Sports Media. Will Ford here joining you. Thanks for making us part of your day. And... Right now we will have the national anthem live on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Then player introductions, and we'll have a guest join us momentarily.
And with that, super fan of Barstool Tate, James Franco is back. No, not the actor, just a super fan of of Ohio's Tate. James, thanks so much for stopping by again, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here for the district championship. Last time Granville was here, you know, ended on a game winner. I don't know if we'd be that close tonight, but I think this is our first real test. Yes, and in, indeed. Uh, two pretty good teams. Uh, both teams were league champions, have the league player of the year on their team, so it should be a good one. But what were your thoughts on, on the last game uh, against London? I mean, Granville, that first half, 31-2, to two, they, they just kind of came out and put the clamps down on them with that full court man pressure, and, I mean, they just dominated throughout, man. What do you think? Yeah, exactly that. Their defense is their calling card. I mean, they have a lot of other offensively with Hannah Annarino or Aaliyah Moore, which are just awesome three-point shooters, but, man, how they win games is on defense. And, of course, it seems like they throw in a little bit of a twist offensively each game. Last time they studied that zone and had a play where they kind of went over the top and alley oop across the top of the mm -hmm. zone. Yep. Seems like they study their opponents well and come in with a little twist each game to match their defense. So uh, coming into this game, I'm sure you saw the video that um, that Tate put out on social media, kind of highlighting the comments of of North Union's coach saying, you know, this is the path we wanted. We're, we're not afraid of the number one seed, Granville. This is what we want. We're, we're not scared, um, and we're ready to go. What did you think of – of the video that Tate put out, and I guess just everything kind of leading up to this to this game here tonight. I love it. I, as a fan, you gotta love it. As you know, North Union's coach, you've got to say that, right? Also, right. they have the right to say it. They they won their side of the bracket. They were not the favorite in all those games. They talked the talk. They're trying to walk the walk again tonight. We'll see if they can. Of course, I'm pulling for Granville here, and I don't know if I would give Granville any extra bulletin board material, which I think. I think that's what the North Union coach did with those comments in that paper. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out in the end. Well, and you brought up something interesting before we hopped on here that Granville kind of becomes, I don't want to say like, I, I, maybe kind of like public enemy, num public enemy number one with kind of just the, the uh, all the attention that they've had of, on them over the last couple of months with Coach Tate moving to Barstool here, you know, relatively soon after the tournament run. Uh, and so now like this team, I guess, has a little bit of, maybe extra outside pressure on them but like they are getting more attention now than any other team in the bracket so it's they're kind of the most wanted i suppose absolutely they're goliath they're the back to back to back defending champs and now they have this social media attention that's kind of blown up which is awesome but if you're a player for another team yeah you you want to get granville you want to play granville um and if you're granville you got to embrace being you know, the Jordan, the Kobe, the LeBron, everyone's coming to you. You're, you're, you're the big dog. So. Right, 100%. So thoughts on this game tonight then? Because, I mean, you know, we talked about kind of the pregame comments and, and the, the fuel to the fire, I suppose, leading up to it. But how do you think this game shakes out initially? Because we know Granville is going to come out in pressure. That's what they always do. That's the staple. But, I mean, how do you think North Union reacts to it? And how do you think their game plan looks I mean, for Granville, and how do you think this first half kind of shakes out? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be closer than we've seen for a couple weeks now for Granville, which will interesting to see how they react, right? What happens when you're not up 20-2 to two at the end of the first sure. quarter? Right. Maybe it's 16-8. You're still in command, but it's not over. So I'm interested to see what Granville does. I think, like we talked about off the top, their calling card is their pressure. They play hard. They play fast. They shoot from the outside. And, I mean, their big advantage, Hannah and Arena, what a player. Both of them. Yeah, did 23, 23 the other night and hitting hitting threes from all over and also a, just a great presence defensively as well. I was going to say, she, what she does offensively, she's the hub and on defense, uh, the best comparison I can think of is like Kevin Garnett. Just yes. anchoring the middle there, calling out plays, calling out cutters. Kevin Garnett with a three-point shot. I mean, yes, a, a special player for sure. Yes. Well, James, we're getting ready to start this game, man. I really appreciate you stopping by, bro. Absolutely. Um, Thanks and, for having you know, me again. Feel free to, to stop by any time, man. Um, maybe maybe halftime you can come up and give your thoughts on, on the first half and see where we're at, man. But I uh, appreciate you stopping by, bro. Sounds good. Thank you as always. All right. That's James Franco, super fan of uh, Tate Moore with Barstool Sports here uh, coming up um, after this tournament run. But we're ready to tip off here at Central Crossing High School. And Granville gets the opening tip after a fight for it initially, and here's Ann Arena with the basketball. Now a right wing three and nothing but bottom to start for Harper Ann Arena.
And a bucket the other way for North Union. 3-2 in the early going. And now a turnover. Aaliyah Moore threw that one away. Thrown ahead. One-on-one. -on, -one on the floor. Losing it. Anarino comes away. Opportunity missed there by Audrey Benedict. Now here's Cottrell. A handoff to Moore. Anarino sets a soft screen but gets it back top of the key. Just hit a three moments ago. Cottrell will now reset near the top. Anarino steps back, hits another three. Now to the left side, North Union, a nice cutter to the basket and she lost it, bobbled it off her knee, out of bounds. Six to two, Granville. Anna Reno, 23 points against London, already with six after a minute and 40 seconds. She has it near the top again. This time she's short, but an offensive rebound, Cottrell. There's a fight for it and there's gonna be a jump ball and some good sportsmanship there, picking each other up off the floor. Do you wonder if things will get a little chippy here early on based on the, the bulletin board material as James Franco brought up leading up to this game. Nice behind the back. Nice split of the defense, but the ball's on the floor, losing it. Who comes away? They're gonna call a foul, I believe, because a North Union player did pick up the basketball and then there was a reach around the back and a hug. Yes. And that foul was on Aaliyah Moore, now an inbound. Left side, Benedict with it. She's looking, dumps it down low. Nice swing, good ball movement. Three on the way, that's off the mark. Anna Reno, the bound, but she throws it away. Benedict, now a dump down low. Missed left-handed layup by Brenna Martino. Anna Reno looking. Now Cottrell will dribble towards the right side. Moore goes off a screen. Anna Reno again. Three threes for Harper Anna Reno. Nine to two, 5 12 first quarter. Anna Reno not messing around. Three for four from behind the arc in the early going. Good pass down low, but it's bobbled and it goes out of bounds off the hands of Benedict. Now Moore will bring it up the floor, approaching midway through the first. Moore is intercepted and there's gonna be a jump ball. Nice steal though by Colgrove for the Wildcats. Pressure near midcourt, there's gonna be a five second count. She gets rid of it, but it goes out of bounds and it's off of Cottrell, I believe. Wedding to inbound, but that's deflected, almost stolen. Now Kennedy Hara racing up the floor to the corner. Benedict for three, air ball, but the rebound and the putback. Martino makes it nine to four. Cottrell picks up her dribble, she's doubled. Now to Aaliyah Moore, one dribble, fires a three, yes! 
timeout on the floor. 30 second timeout for Bree Jackson and North Union. Harper Ann Arena with three threes, three for four behind the arc. Midway through the first quarter. And Aaliyah Moore adds a triple as well. So now out of the timeout. North Union basketball bringing it up the floor is Wedding. Zoe Wedding picks up her dribble. Backdoor pass, fumbled, recovered to the corner. A three, that's too strong. An air ball and Aaliyah Moore the rebound. She'll run ahead to Cottrell. Dumping it down low, no foul called, and it's gonna be out of bounds off of Granville. Mortimer had lots of contact there as she dove to the floor. Addison Wedding into the game for North Union. Benedict has her pocket picked. Anarino, lefty basket, 14 to four. The lead is 10. And now this full court pressure once again. Benedict drives left, kicks it out. Way too strong on the three point attempt but the offensive rebound. Lindsay has it, now a handoff, driving, blocking foul called on Taylor Wareheim. Benedict will inbound for North Union underneath the basket. Cottrell takes a seat for Granville. Now an inbound to Gabby Lindsay up top. Looking right, we go back left. Almost intercepted. The gamble doesn't pay off. Free throw line extended, jumper is missed. Wareheim the rebound. Now Verasso is gonna run in transition. Wareheim will go left, kick to the corner and get it back. Verasso's pass is tipped, stolen. It's still on the floor. North Union comes away with it. Benedict gets the basket to go off the glass and it's 14 to six. 224 remaining first quarter. The Wildcats battling. Barrasso picks up her dribble, gets it to Mortimer, goes left, puts it up, misses that. Anarino, the offensive rebound. Moore, too strong on the three, but a long rebound is collected by Anarino again. Back down low to Mortimer. Offensive foul. Lowered the shoulder. L. Mortimer picks up the foul, and we're going the other way. Lindsay walks it up, but she's gonna be doubled. Needs some help. Gets it to Kennedy Hara, now to the corner. Zoe wedding this time. Verasso harassing her, and there's gonna be a foul. Wedding inbounds to Hera. 1.30 remaining in the first quarter. Here's Addison Wedding, now to the right wing. Good job by Granville defending the screen action. 
I don't know if you guys noticed that, but Lindsay kind of pump faked the ball in Verasso's face. Kind of like the Kobe Bryant, Matt Barnes moment. And now there's going to be a foul on that fake. Verasso bumping into Lindsay. That's Verasso's second foul in short order. So she might be coming to the bench here in a few minutes. We're into the bonus though, so free throws for North Union. First one knocked down for Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay goes two for two. Moore gonna set up some offense with 60 seconds remaining in the quarter. Mortimer, now to Wareheim. Anna Reno, a nice screen from Wareheim, but this one's well, well off the mark. And it's gonna be a foul the other way on Mortimer. That's her second. And we're still in the bonus, of course, so free throws coming for North Union as they trail by six with 54 seconds remaining in this opening quarter, not in the game if you're just now tuning in. First one goes, five point game, two subs in for North Union, number five and number two, Audrey Benedict and Brenda Martino. Third sub will come in. Kennedy Hera. And now there's some confusion on substitutions, so. She might be coming in for the shooter instead, but we'll see. Two for two. And now a sub. Fifty-four seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Anna Reno, eleven of Granville's fourteen. Pass is deflected. Wareheim goes into the backcourt to get it. It was deflected, and it's off the foot of Cottrell. So Granville's lead was ten in this first quarter. North Union has it down to four and a chance to cut it to one possession with 33 seconds remaining in this first. Wedding, kicks to the corner, down low. One dribble, putting it up, putting it down. Addison Wedding. Wareheim now with 14 seconds. Anna Reno goes through her hands. Now thrown ahead, one on one. Missing the layup, but the offensive rebound missed again. Four seconds remaining. There's going to be a foul, and it's going to be on North Union. So Granville will get the last shot, 3.1, and they'll have to go to the length of the court to do it. Wareheim will go take a seat. Inbounding for Granville will be Megan Lodge. Let's see how good she is at playing quarterback. 3.1 remaining. It's 14 to 12 Granville first quarter. She throws it ahead, goes through the hands. Now a half court shot at the buzzer, goes out of bounds. And we end the opening quarter, an entertaining one with Granville, once leading by 10, now leading by only two. Harper Anarino leads the way with 11. And we'll stay here with you on Storied Rival Sports Media. Facebook, X, and YouTube, Will Ford here with you. What an opening quarter we have a great basketball game so far through one here at Central Crossing High School. And again, if some of you tuning in here this evening are new to Storied Rival Sports Media, if you're tuning in because of the connection to Barstool Sports with Tate Moore, uh, we really appreciate you making us part of your night. Uh, but Storied Rival Sports Media is a uh, 
highlight video company for you know, for high school sports. Uh, we we are the best in the business at promoting high school sports, and we have the best highlight video packages available. And you can find them on social media. Just search the hashtag Unreal Highlights um, because our highlights are unreal. Um, and now we'll get ready with quarter number two. Storied Rivals also does team apparel for various teams, various schools as well, so that way players and parents can rock some pretty sweet merch. And again, if you're interested in either of those services, you can send a message to us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, slash X, um, Instagram, all of those handles are at Storied Rivals, so. Here we go with quarter number two. North Union will start the quarter with the ball. Hera swing pass to the left baseline and knocking down the jumper, a tie game. Brenna Martino knots things up at 14. She has six of North Union's 14. Cottrell, Wareheim, now Moore steps back for three. That one rattles out. The tip is no good and a rebound for North Union. Hera's gonna run, now to the corner. Wareheim with the steal, she walks. And it goes right back. Anna Reno telling her team to settle down. We were up 10 guys, let's settle down, let's recapture this momentum. But right now the Wildcats have it all. They were down 10 and they've tied it up. Hera now, a pass to the corner. Benedict, corner three, off the rim multiple times. A steal, and North Union has the lead. Addison Wedding blocks the pass, lays it in, 16-14 Wildcats. Cottrell trying to set up some offense. Now Anna Reno, reverse pivot, she's fouled on the inbound. She is frustrated though. Cottrell will throw it into Anna Reno. It goes behind her though, and she has to go to midcourt to retrieve it. They're gonna run the same set play here. Moore, right wing. Anna Reno looking now, fakes the pass, will drive, will spin, will lay it up and be fouled. Two free throws on the way for Harper Anna Reno. She has 11 and all 11 of those came in the first quarter. Harper Anna Reno on the year, a 68% free throw shooter. First one goes down. Two for two. Now full court pressure coming from Granville. Really good job by Hera, but she almost throws it away. And now that one's stolen. Alone, a drive to the basket, and Wareheim puts Granville back in front. North Union has done a pretty decent job against this pressure. Here's Benedict, one dribble, now to the corner. Thought about a three. Dumping it down low again. Knocked out of bounds, almost out of bounds. Wareheim able to get the steal, and now there's a foul on Hera. Just over two minutes gone by in the second quarter. Anna Reno being pushed around near the top of the key. Moore 
Hesitated on a three ball. Mortimer picks up her dribble, has her pass deflected, and it's stolen. Wareheim, another steal though. Saves a possession. Mortimer to Cottrell, one dribble, throw it up, bank it in. Now ball's on the floor. Oh, and they're gonna call a technical foul here, an elbow, I think, on North Union's Kennedy Hera. Threw an elbow on the dive to the floor. So now we'll have some technical free throws coming. I'm not sure who's going to shoot them. It looks like it's going to be Anna Reno, of course. Who else would it be? So Granville leads 20 to 16, now 21 to 16 with one more free throw. Now 15 points for Harper in this first half. Harper barking out orders for this side out play. Inbound to Wareheim, but now Cottrell will cross half court with the basketball. Three minutes gone by in the second. Anarino looking, she gets doubled, has to pick up her dribble. Wareheim will drive, more wide open for three, and it goes. Second three-pointer for Aaliyah Moore. She has six, 25 to 16 Blue Aces. They're back up nine. And now a North Union turnover. Granville back in control. Cottrell goes right, picks up her dribble, looking for help. Wareheim's fouled on the catch. Zoe Wedding will pick up the personal. Taylor Wareheim will go to the free throw line. Two shots. First one knocked down. Lead back to 10. Wareheim misses the second, a 56% free throw shooter on the year. Now thrown ahead, wide open three. That's off the back of the rim, long rebound collected by Wareheim. Now Moore's gonna run. She'll pull out though. Good job by the Wildcats getting back defensively. Now Cottrell goes middle, Anarino fakes a three, drives, gets to her spot, throws it up, and is fouled. A chance for Harper and Arena now to get points number 16 and 17 at the free throw line with 4.04 remaining in the second. Couple subs into the game after Harper nails the first free throw. Now some officials talking, not sure what about. We have another sub in, Kennedy Hara back in the game. Anna Reno now finally gets to shoot her second free throw. Two for two, once again for Anna Reno, she has 17. Lead up to 12, the largest of the night for Granville. But an easy layup. Brings it back down to 10. Good job by North Union breaking the press. Yeah. 
Anarino needs some help. And she walked off the catch. The shot fake, and she shuffled her feet. Benedict, nice cross, but she loses the ball. And Wareheim, another steal. She has been active in this first half. But now Cottrell needs some help. Well, Leah Moore steps out of bounds, though. And Arena, I'm sorry, Cottrell will be called for a foul. Riding Hera. L. Mortimer will come in. Hannah Rogovin will go back to the bench. Hera goes right, now gets it back top of the key to the left, tried to dump it down low, and there's gonna be a jump ball called, and it's gonna be Granville basketball. But Hera was looking for someone to dive to the basket. Two forty-five remaining in the half. Anarino picks up her dribble. Now Cottrell gets it back. Moore to the corner. Now the post up. Anarino back out to El Mortimer. Her three off the mark. The rebound, Anarino, high arcing three, out of play off the top of the backboard. Gabby Lindsay will bring it up the floor, able to break the press, goes down low. Cole Grove with it, but needs some help. Lindsay gets it back, lays it in off the glass. Under 10 once again. Mortimer with the post up. Throws that one out of bounds. It's gonna stay with the Wildcats. Wareheim, top of the key to Anarino down low. Now the skip to Cottrell. She'll go middle. There's going to be a blocking foul called on Kennedy Hera. That's the third foul on Hera as Cottrell goes to the stripe. Misses the first. <laughs> Missing the second one as well is Cottrell. It's still an eight point game with 150 remaining in the half. Lindsay. Off the glass, misses that one, but gets her own miss. Now it's out of bounds off of Cottrell. She reached in. Lindsay inbounds to Benedict. Mortimer pokes it loose. Now Benedict, the half spin fake, driving, and two shots. Coming up for Audrey Benedict. Chance to cut it to six now with 96, I'm sorry, 94 seconds remaining, if I can read a clock properly. Audrey 
Now a seven point game. Three points now for Benedict. And make it four. 28 22. 130 remaining in the half. Mortimer down low to Anarino. The nice fake. Pretty move from Harper Anarino. She has 19 of Granville's 30. One dribble and a three is knocked down. Addison Wedding makes it a five point game. Under a minute. Anarino posts up, picks up her dribble, gets doubled. Back out to Cottrell, 45 seconds. Anarino spots up. You bet. Another three for Anarino. She has 22. And a travel by Benedict going left. 31 seconds remaining in the half. Eight point game. Anarino with the answer after Wedding's three. And let's see if Granville plays for the last shot here. 24 seconds. Mortimer looking. She'll go left, put it up. It rims out. It's on the floor. Anarino has it. Misses that one. 13 seconds. Jump ball called. That's the correct call. Both girls had their hands on the basketball. They were trying to rip it away from each other. Nothing other than that. So the Wildcats will get the last shot, presumably. 11.6, they'll roll it up the floor. Gabby Lindsay crosses over, fakes, wedding, right wing three, rattles out, one second. Granville has it, and we go to halftime with the Blue Aces leading by eight, 33-25. Harper Anarino had 23 against London, has 22 in one half against the Wildcats. Action-packed first half. We'll take a break here for a few moments. We're gonna uh, highlight our sponsor tonight, Story Rivals Team Apparel. Our guy Sean Spencer runs our apparel for Storied Rivals and he does an absolutely amazing job. Uh, he's a, a one man crew, does it all. I help him out sometimes, but I'll tell you what, he is the driving force behind our apparel. Uh, and so we definitely want to highlight what we do as far as apparel because uh, we try to, uh, we want to make sure that players look good, feel good and play good in, in the apparel that they get, um, whether it's, you know, warm-ups or uniforms for some teams or you know just t-shirts and hoodies uh, to, to rep your team whatever it is we can do it for you um, so myself uh, and Aaron put together uh, Aaron Sprague that is the uh, the founder of storied rivals put together a commercial for you to talk about what we do with storied rivals team apparel how long we've been doing it and how you can sign up for our services if you're interested but here this is me and Aaron with Storied Rivals Sports Media talking about our team apparel stores. Will and Aaron here with Storied Rivals. It's halftime right now. We'll get you back for the third quarter here in a moment, but we wanted to tell you about what we got going on at Storied Rivals. Most importantly, with our sponsor tonight, Storied Rivals Team Apparel. Right, Storied Rivals Team Apparel. A lot, or hopefully people know that we do team apparel. Um, if you don't, this is what we're going to update you tonight uh, here at halftime of the game. Um, you know us for our highlight videos that we produce. We've been producing since 2008, but in 2016, about 2016, we started doing team apparel and uh, it's actually become a really big part of our business. So we wanted to make sure that everyone knows we offer that and what that looks like. So what gave you the idea to start doing team apparel? Because obviously you've been pro providing, you know, these highlight videos for a number of years and trying to document team seasons, but what about the apparel side of it? What got you into that side? Yeah, I mean, I have a background in printing and apparel, you know, previous to doing storied rivals in another life. And uh, really, I just enjoy that side of the business. I enjoy um, shirts you can wear, 
um, shirts that are comfortable. Um, and I also want to wear nice stuff. Um, so it just aligned well with our business. You know, we see a lot of teams doing stores and needing to sell apparel and we thought we could offer the best solution possible. So what we took or what we've taken is, um, basically everything you know about team apparel and try to make it the best possible process that we've took, taken all the problems that we hear people have and have tried to make them as good as possible. So those problems don't exist with us. I mean, what are some, some of the reviews that you've gotten over the years? Cause you work with a ton of schools and we've been doing apparel with teams now for, I mean, it's almost 10 years at this point. Like what have you heard as far as feedback from, you know, players, parents, coaches, as far as like how much they like yeah. the apparel that we give them? I mean, that's a good question. I think everyone likes our online stores, the ease of the online stores, our transparency with deadlines. I mean, a lot of times when people run a store, no one really lets them know where they're at in the process, when they're going to get their stuff, why they didn't get their stuff. We try to be as transparent as possible from the beginning. So um, I think that's something we do really well. And that's some of the feedback we get. I think people really like the designs we come up with. Uh, here's just some examples. You know, we've worked with teams all across the state. This happens to be West Muskingum Baseball. This was from last year. This is a standard t-shirt. Then you got something like Marysville Softball out of the Col greater Columbus area. Um, that was for the preseason fundraiser store. And then even Marysville Softball, again, they had a second design as well. I think that red and blue really pops off that white shirt. And this is a nice fashion fitted tee. This isn't your standard tee. So people like the service. People like the transparency, the on-time delivery. They like the designs. I think they just like the entire process. That's the feedback we've gotten. Pretty much any team we've worked with from a team fundraiser standpoint, they always come back. We make it so there's no other reason not to come back. Sure. I mean, we offer any and everything they would need. Uh, I think we keep getting better every year. Now, how fast do teams usually get their apparel once they're, they, you know, they order it and the store closes? Like how fast right. do they typically get it? Yeah, that's a good question. So normally when we set up the stores, we usually say three weeks after the close date. That gives us a nice window to operate in. Sometimes we deliver quicker than the three weeks, but usually no later than the three weeks. And if there is an issue, we certainly let you know well in advance. It can give you an idea when the timeline is to receive your items. But that's how we do it. When a team comes to us and says, we want to open a store for our team or organization, we say, all right, when do you want the items delivered by? And then we back off by three weeks and that's kind of your close date. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that's how, that's how it operates. And uh, the way we do it also makes the teams a good bit of money the way we, we run the stores. So how does that work? How are teams able to make money from the apparel stores that we run for them? It's really simple. The more you sell, the more you make. We, make, we, we do all of our kickback based off of total sales. So it all adds up in one pot. Um, so no matter how many hoodies you sell, t-shirts, whatever, all it's based off the final total. And even included in that total is any upcharges we have by adding the player name and number on the back. There, that also is included in that total. You know, if they, if you work hard and, and sell a lot of gear or at least try to push it to your family, friends, and parents, you're going to raise a good bit of money. In fact, we had a team this past year, a football team, end up receiving their entire Storied Rivals highlight video for free because they sold so much gear. And they just went and tried to sell the gear. I think the other thing that we help facilitate is we remind you to remind your people to sell stuff. Um, that's really key is to make sure your people know the store exists. And you can't just put the link out once. They have to put it out consistently and remind them at the last minute. I think that's really key. Um, our stores show that people do like our items and people do make money. The only people that don't make money are the people that don't share the link. They, they don't try sure. to get people to order. So uh, it's been a really great process. I mean, a couple other things we have here before we get back to the game. Again, this is Philo Softball from last year, another return customer we have. Um, Tri-Valley Baseball, another repeat customer we've had over the years. Um, we also do championship gear for teams. So we have a store already, John Glenn Softball, one of the best softball programs around, 3 P. We're talking softball and baseball, Will, because spring sports are coming up, and we're taking some spring clients now. So if you have a spring sport team that you want to get involved in apparel and want the best apparel store possible, definitely hit us up. The best way to contact us, really, send us a message to any of our social media platforms. That works. We check them all. Or send us an email at info at storyrivals.com. And we will, or one of our reps will get with you pretty quickly and see what you need and tell you all more about our process and how it works. But uh, I really enjoy it. I think it's a real home run. It aligns super well with our business. And if you like our videos and the detail that goes into our videos, you'll love the apparel we do because we don't cut corners on that either. We really try to offer a great customer experience and then something that will raise a lot of money for your team as well. Aaron loves the apparel. I love the apparel. And we know that you'll love the apparel too. So that's our sponsor tonight. Uh, Storied Rivals team of Parable. Let you get, let's get you back to the third quarter of action here with Storied Rivals Sports Media.
Welcome back, everyone. Storied Rivals Team Apparel, our sponsor tonight. Will Ford here with you with Storied Rivals, and James Franco's back. Uh, James, that, that first half, I'll tell you what, man, it was it was pretty electric. We saw Harper Ann Arena, who has 22 of the team's 33. She has two-thirds of the team's points after one half, but she hit three threes to start. Uh, she had 11 of the team's first 14. But North Union, I'll tell you what, they kind of made it chippy. They, they fought back, clawed back. Um, but now Granville leading by eight. But you kind of called it like Granville's not used to this sort of game where, you know, they're usually up 20 at halftime. And instead you were like, what if they're only up eight at half? You kind of nailed it right on the head, man. No, absolutely. At first, Death Taxes and Harper and Arino having 20 first half points. I, I, like you said, I think she had 20 in the first half last game. This game is intense. We had a technical foul early from North Union. Right. The atmosphere is electric. Huge crowds on both sides. Every bucket, every call. Uh, it, that is what's going to be. The second half, the game's not over. Both teams are going to have to play their, their starters probably the rest of the way. Granville's still in a great spot. You want to rather be up eight than, than down. Oh, sure. Amount. Of course. Um, of course. But, of course, we saw this game. I think North Union put Granville down for the first time in their playoff run here. Yeah, they, they did take a lead in that second quarter. Yeah, they tied. They were down 10 in the first, and they were able to tie it and then take a lead by two and until Granville, of course, you know, you know, regained control. But, yes, you're absolutely right. And I think the the – Press again for Granville, especially just want to shout out there. I mean, Taylor Warheim, I believe, is it? Number four. Warheim, yeah. Unbelievable. Yes. All over the court, cleaning up boards on the defensive end, getting four, five, six, seven steals. I mean, it, and that's not an exaggeration either. Like, she might have six steals already. Very, very seriously, every pass thrown by North Union it feels like she has gotten a hand on it or she's just straight up stolen the ball today already. Uh, so, Granville doing what they always do, which is Harper and Arena will pound the rock and shoot, shoot it from deep on the offensive end, and defensively they're going to make you speed up. Yeah, what did you think of, of North Union's approach near the end of the, the second quarter there? Like they, were kind of, they were kind of doubling Harper off the catch there a lot, and so she was forced to give it up a handful of times. So not as effective offensively near the end of the first half. I, I would imagine you'd think they would stick with that going into this third quarter. I think it's what they have to do, right? Two-thirds of the team's points in the first half, but a dangerous game to play when you've got – you know, Aaliyah on Granville, some other really right. good yeah, shooters. Yeah, she, I mean, she's hit a couple threes tonight, so. It, it's a dangerous game you have to play, but in district championships, you often don't have a good hand. You play with the best hand you've got, two good, really good teams Well, and I, and I think you'd rather someone other than the best player beat you. Yeah, so. At the end of the day, you'd rather not be Harper, go get 40 on your head. You'd rather be like, fine, someone else got 15, 20, whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, yep, so. Looks like we're getting ready to start the third quarter, man, but thanks for coming back up. Really appreciate your analysis because I know <laughs> that you're, you're big into this, man, so I appreciate you stopping appreciate by Thank you again. for having me. Go Granville. James Franco joining us for halftime, and now we're ready to go with this third quarter. Again, thanks for joining us with Storied Rival Sports Media on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Anna Reno, 22 first-half points, almost makes it 24 on that drive, but she misses that one off the glass. An eight-point game to open up the third quarter here. Hera on the right wing, now dumping it down low. Kick out to the top. Lefty drive. That one slipped out of her hands on the way up. Audrey Benedict couldn't put that one in. Now Moore. Wareheim, who was excellent defensively in that first half. Mortimer now looking for Anna Reno. Puts up her own shot, misses it. Anna Reno goes over the back. No call. Gets her own miss again. Kicks it out to Cottrell. She'll fire a three. That one misses, and North Union the bound. Everyone kind of stopped after that first offensive rebound, and now Benedict count it and a foul. Audrey Benedict makes it a six-point game. She has six points. And that foul on El Mortimer, her third. Benedict can't convert the three-point play, and Mortimer comes away with the rebound, and she's going to be fouled 90 feet away from the basket. Addison Wedding. That's the second foul on Wedding. Mortimer dumps it down low. Anna Reno, she doubled, but it doesn't matter. Anna 
Marino with 24. Now Wedding on the baseline gets the bounce. Wedding has 11 to lead the Wildcats. Quick drive and a foul on Cottrell, or against Cottrell, I should say. Cottrell rattles out on the second, but Anna Reno, another offensive rebound, and she stepped out of bounds. Hera throws it ahead, and somehow Wedding comes away with it. One-on-one -on -one to the basket, misses that, bodies on the floor, Cottrell the rebound, and now Wareheim will race up the court. Anna Reno calling for it and has it. She'll go middle, takes it herself, misses. Wedding the rebound, almost walked with it. And now Hera. Drive, Benedict misses. Mortimer the rebound. Now Cottrell racing, loses it, gets it back. Now Anna Reno catches the bounce pass. We're gonna go the other way to North Union now. Benedict, nice pass to Hera. Free throw line jumpers missed. Rebound Cottrell, five minutes on the clock in the third quarter. Now Moore will drive right. Has her pass stolen. Now Hera, no points, three fouls. Throws to the corner. Now to the high post. And thrown out of play. Wareheim on the kick out. A three for Wareheim. Six points for Taylor. And now out of bounds off of Cottrell is going to stay with North Union. But a big three point shot by Wareheim makes it a nine point game. Granville in front midway through this third quarter. Now a kick to the corner. Right wing three ball knocked down. Back to six. Gabby Lindsay. She has seven. And now a steal from Lindsay. She'll take on the world. Pump fakes Anna Reno. Misses the layup though, but gets her own rebound in the corner. Now it's stolen. Wareheim another steal. She'll race. Jump stop, lay it in as the two defenders fly by. Granville up eight. Now Hera, a three for her. What an answer, down to five again. Timeout called. by Tate Moore, 
He made the motion as if he was calling a timeout, but he actually wasn't. The official misunderstood his signal. So it'll be a side out. A steal. Now one on two in transition. Zoe Wedding will slow things down. Nice pass from Kara, and one! Kaylin Colgrove makes it a three point game. But an unbelievable pass by Kennedy Hara from the elbow. Two fifty four remaining in the third quarter. Now some discussion. There's a hold up here before this and one opportunity. The foul was on L Mortimer. That's her fourth foul, so she'll have to go to the bench. And she'll likely sit until at some point in the fourth quarter. Free throw rattles out and the rebound Wareheim. Anna Reno on the catch gets fouled. But she is being doubled after every catch. Harper had 22 points after one half, only has two points after five minutes of play in the third quarter. So North Union really focusing on taking her away. Barrasso on the inbound. Lindsay guarding her. Barrasso turns the corner, blocked. But they're gonna call a foul and two shots for Barrasso. A foul on the arm. Gabby Lindsay picks that one up. Delaney Verasso to the free throw line. Misses the first one, so still a three point game. Verasso goes one for two, and a timeout called by Tate Moore. 30 second timeout. So we'll stay here with you with Story Rival Sports Media Live on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Will Ford with you. Thanks so much for making us part of your night. Granville leading by 12 at one point. Only leads by four with 2.32 remaining in this third quarter. It's been chippy, but it's also been a lot of fun. Once again, want to shout out James Franco for joining us twice here this evening, pregame and then at halftime. Super fan of Ohio's Tate. So now North Union basketball, they're gonna throw it ahead to Gabby Lindsay. She breaks loose, throws it up, throws it in, in transition, 41-39, just a two point game. Verasso bobbles it for a moment. And she's going to be called for an offensive foul. Bodying up Lindsay. Trying to create separation. And so now the Wildcats have a chance to tie or take the lead. 2-10 remaining in the third quarter. Lindsay takes the inbound. She's guarded by Cottrell. Crosses over. Wedding now on the right wing. Colgrove. Back to Lindsay. The other wedding in the left corner will go middle. Near the free throw line, that one rattles out, but an offensive rebound. Now kicked out. Lindsay fires a three, misses that, and Anarino collects the miss. 
Verasso is going to run with 135 remaining in the third. Now she'll slow it down. Anna Reno. She's going to go ISO and hand off to Verasso. Now Cottrell. Ball's on the floor. Who comes away? Going to be a jump. And it's going to go back to the Wildcats. Here's Benedict on the left side. Doesn't go off the screen. Will drive, take on two defenders. Misses it. Anna Reno going to be off of her out of bounds. Benedict throws it in to Hera. Under a minute to go in the third. Two-point game. Lindsay back to Hera, wide open layup, tie game. Forty-five seconds now for Granville. A skip to the corner. Verasso drives, gets inside. Granville takes the lead back. 43-41. Thirty seconds remaining in the quarter. Hera, 20 seconds, picks up her dribble. Finds Lindsay, guarded by Moore. Anarino picks up the foul, it'll be a side out. That's only Anarino's first foul. 14.1 remaining in the third. Gabby Lindsay has nine, picks up her dribble, eight seconds. Benedict throws a pass, has it deflected, ball's on the floor, Verasso has it, .2 on the clock. There'll be a jump ball, so that'll do it for the quarter. Just be a matter of inbounding the basketball. It's Granville ball. Not the execution that North Union wanted on that last possession of the quarter, and now just an inbound, and that'll do it for the third. North Union storms back. They were down eight at halftime. They trail by two as we go into the final stanza. Again, thanks for making us part of your night, whether you're watching on Facebook, X, or YouTube. We really appreciate it. Will Ford with Storied Rival Sports Media. Also want to shout out our crew tonight. We've got Parker running our main cam. Uh, Sean Fisher on the sideline collecting highlights for our highlight video, but also acting as a second camera whenever we take him. And Kate and Casey running the iPad for us. And of course, we're going to shout out Aaron as well for setting up the stream and, and, and getting us here this evening. But now one quarter will decide the Central District champion in Division II girls basketball. Granville led by as much as 12. They now only lead by two. Granville, league champs. North Union, league champs. They both have their league player of the year on their squad. Both of them have at least four all-conference players. It's a star-studded matchup. And it goes to the last quarter as Hera gets the fourth started with a tough drive to the hoop. Tie game once again, and Hera has seven. Now Anna Reno is denied the post-up pass.
Now Wareheim takes the inbound to Cottrell. Brasso trying to flash to the ball, but now finally gets it. Struggled initially. Will drive. Cottrell in the corner. Short on the three-point attempt. Now Hera throws it ahead to Benedict. Fakes the pass, drives. And North Union recaptures the lead for the first time since the second quarter. They lead 45-43. And Arino fakes and fires and misses. Only two points for Anarino in this second half after scoring 22 in the first. Now Wedding on the right wing. Benedict down low, wide open, blocked by Anarino. Now ahead to Aaliyah Moore, hesitates, loses it out of bounds, it'll stay with Granville. Marasso will go back to the bench. L. Mortimer with her four fouls back in the game. She gets it near the high post, loses it. Loses it again. Good defense by Wedding. Trying to find somebody. And a timeout was called by Tate Moore. 30 seconds. Excellent defensive pressure from Addison Wedding. Forty-five, forty-three. The Wildcats in front with 6.21 remaining in the fourth. And again, still plenty of time. So much can still happen. But Harbor and Arena has hit a buzzer beater to win a district title before. And who knows, she might have to do it again tonight. And she gets it off the inbound and will hand it back off to Cottrell. Anarino doubled. Spins, drives, steps through. And there's going to be a foul on the floor. I think all of North Union's fans thought that was going to be a travel. As the boos ring out here at Central Crossing High School. Anarino, one-handed catch off the inbound. Now to Cottrell in the corner. Anarino's going to post up. She gets doubled, puts up the shot. Too strong, gets her own miss, puts it back up, and she's fouled. Anarino has struggled in this third quarter, not only just to score, but to catch the basketball. Been doubled very frequently. And Arena misses the first one, though. Triple fives on the clock, 5.55 remaining in the game. And Arena 0 for 1 at the stripe. 1 for 2 as that one rattles in. It's a one point game. Lindsay throws it ahead. Gets it back, we'll skip it across court. Benedict thought about a three, we'll fake, we'll drive. Steps through, misses the shot, out of bounds, off of Benedict, and it's Granville basketball. Cottrell dribbling, looking for somebody. Gets it back from Wareheim. Will spin, skip it, and it's off of Anarino. She thought it was going to be deflected on the way to her, and I think it surprised her that no one was able to get a hand on it. So that's a turnover.
Gabby Lindsay will take her time bringing it across the court. Now she's going to get doubled, and it's ripped away by Anna Reno in a jump ball. They're going to call a jump. Lindsay was able to keep her hands on it. It doesn't hurt Granville, though, because they do get possession. Wareheim catches the inbound, and now Cottrell will have to cross half court again. Guarded by Hera. Mortimer with the four fouls. Hands it back to Cottrell. Cottrell will go left, kick it out to Moore. A deep left wing three is airballed. Lindsay throws it ahead to Hera. Will drive, put it up, misses that. Anarino has her pass tipped and stolen by Lindsay. Hera inside. North Union a three point lead and a full timeout called by the Wildcats. North Union has their largest lead of three, 47-44, and we're almost midway through the fourth. Boy, oh boy, is it tense here at Central Crossing. If you're just now tuning in, you've missed three and a half great quarters. But you can always rewatch it later, live on YouTube, Facebook, X, wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening. We appreciate it. Will Ford here with you with Storied Rivals Sports Media. And if you don't know what Storied Rivals is, if you're new to Storied Rivals, uh, we're a highlight video company for high school sports. And so we put out the best highlight experience available, especially in the state of Ohio. And we're the best in the business. So you can check out everything that we've done on YouTube with all the teams that we've covered this basketball season. But we cover a wide variety of sports for a wide variety of schools and teams. And we also do team apparel for a lot of the schools that we film as well. So send us a message on social media if you're interested in any of those services. But now we're back. 4.30 remaining in the fourth. Granville basketball, and here's Cottrell. Verasso off her leg, diving, and it's going to be an over and back because Verasso touched it first. It was not deflected. It was off her leg on the catch. It was not deflected by a North Union player. And if Verasso was the first one to touch it going back court, then that is indeed a backcourt violation. So now North Union leading by three has the basketball. Benedict fouled, blocking foul on Cottrell. One team foul for Granville, two for North Union, so we're not even close to shooting free throws yet. Barrasso will go back to the bench and in is Aaliyah Moore. Hera rips through. Now Lindsay thought about a three, will drive and an offensive foul moving screen. That's on Kalen Colgrove. That's the third team foul for North Union. The second foul on Colgrove. Here's Moore on the left side. Wareheim. Moore gets it back, will drive right, scoops it up, almost puts it down. She is fouled, and they're going to say it's on the floor, I believe. So no free throws. Just kidding. I lied to you. There are two free throws coming. I thought he pointed to the floor first. Aaliyah Moore at the free throw line. First one is knocked down. Moore has seven. And very quickly, North Union is up to four team fouls. So Granville will be shooting free throws 
relatively soon as Aaliyah Moore knocks down both after the shooting foul. Now they'll throw it ahead and that's gonna be turned over on the Hail Mary pass. Mortimer doubled, throws it to Wareheim. It's a one point game, Cottrell dumps it down to Mortimer and loses it and she stepped out of bounds, it's back to the Wildcats. 3.33 remaining. NU up one, 47-46. Now Wedding easily gets inside and a layup for Colgrove and it's back to a three point game. Colgrove with six. But Zoe Wedding was able to easily drive into the paint. Now Wareheim drives and is fouled and will go to the free throw line. It's a hard foul and I think Tate Moore won a day a, a flagrant call it potentially. Now Harper Anarino's on the floor and that's a cause for concern for Granville fans. And I think she's holding the knee that's braced. That is not good. She is not able to stand up. At least not right now. You hope she just kind of bumped it awkwardly. They have the trainers out coming to talk to her. She is able to bend that leg, though, so that is the good thing. Three oh five remaining in the fourth quarter, and North Union, after trailing by as much as 12, leads by 3, 49-46. And Harper Anarino down on the court, favoring that left leg that is braced. And we'll step aside for a few minutes for an injury timeout. We'll come back in a moment. And Harper Anarino able to stand up. And that's good to see, not only for her, but also to see fans from both sides, Granville and North Union, glad that she was able to, to get up. Now the question is, how serious is what she's battling with that lower leg? And does she return to the game at some point? It's crunch time, so you don't know. But Granville will have to go without her, at least for the moment. And Harper immediately runs back to the scorer's table. So she's ready to go. Wareheim will have to shoot a free throw first. Should be two shots.
Wareheim makes the first, so back to a two-point game, 49-47. Wareheim goes two for two, so it's a one-point game. Anarino has to sit out, I think, for a moment per the rules as that one's knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay with North Union, though. Off of Benedict's hands, or knocked away from her hands. But Anarino back in the game, and she seems to be moving fairly well. Now an inbound, and it's through the hands of Hera, and a steal for Wareheim. She has to have about 10 steals at this point. She'll drive, and it's going to be a defensive foul. That is shocking. I'm a little surprised. Kennedy Hera's fourth foul. She was called for a block. I did think that Wareheim kind of threw the arm to push off. But maybe the official had a better view of it from his vantage point. But Wareheim missed the first free throw, and she misses both of them. So 49-48. Wedding able to drive, now to Hera in the corner, steps back for three. That's off the back iron, but an offensive rebound. 2.30 remaining, 49-48, North Union. Turned over. Now Moore throws it ahead to Wareheim. She's fouled and won! Granville retakes the lead with 2.20 remaining. And the foul on Colgrove. Wareheim has 11 points. And she makes it a two point lead for the Blue Aces, 51 49. Wedding inbounds to Benedict. She's doubled, throws it ahead to Wedding. Now, Hera misses that one, and the rebound Mortimer. Two minutes to go. Two-point game. Anarino near half court's doubled, and a timeout called by Tate Moore, a full timeout. High drama, high stakes, a district championship on the line in, a, in the Central District. Harper Anarino goes down, gets up, checks back in. She has 25 points. 22 of those were in the first half, though, so she has been shut down for the most part in this third and fourth quarter. But they have the lead once again. And Harper is helping Coach Moore draw up a play on the sideline. Moore's going to inbound to Anarino in the backcourt. We're under two minutes to go. Anarino's pressured. Now Cottrell near the left side. 1.45 to go. Anarino, there's going to be a foul called away from the ball, a push, and that means more free throws for Granville. That's going to be on Audrey Benedict. That's only her first, but 
That's the fifth team foul for the Wildcats, so two free throws coming for Katie Cottrell. And she misses the first, so it's still a two-point game. 51-49, 1.42 to go. One for two. Makes it a three-point game. Hera catches the inbound. Drives by two. Throws it away. It goes through the arms of Benedict. One thirty-seven to go, and it's Granville basketball. Wareheim. She'll go across midcourt herself. Kicks to the side, Aaliyah Moore, corner three. Back iron, offensive rebound, Mortimer as she hits the deck. And there's gonna be a foul called on, I believe number five, Brenna Martino, and so El Mortimer will go to the strike. And actually, no, it's called on Zoe Wedding, and that's her fifth foul. So she has to come out, and back in is Gabby Lindsay. Mortimer, first free throw of two, is good. Four-point game, and more importantly, a two-possession game. Both are good. That one off the front of the rim. Now Hera spins, stops, kicks it out. Lindsay thought about a three, will drive, throws it up off the glass, misses, and there's gonna be a jump ball called as Cottrell rips it away, and it's gonna stay with the Wildcats. 1.13 to go. Now in the corner. Benedict drives, blocked by Mortimer, and it's gonna go to Granville. It was off of Benedict's head, I believe. So now Granville leads by five, 106 to go. Closing in on a district title. So a foul immediately, and Cottrell to the free throw line. That one rattles out. So still a five point game. That one rims out as well. 60 seconds. Wildcats down five. Hera doubled. Jump ball called and it goes to Granville. The Blue Aces can sense it and so can their fans. A chance for their fourth straight district title and to move to the Sweet 16. 45 seconds, Moore's doubled. Now to Cottrell, Anna Reno. Gonna hold on to it, she's fouled. That's Addison Wedding's fourth. So she only has one more left. And Harper Anarino struggled in the second half, went down briefly with an injury. Cool, calm, and collected at the strike. 26 for her. Misses the second, though. Six-point game, 35 seconds to go. Gabby Lindsay to Hera. Gets doubled. They'll throw it down low. Block shot, Anarino, and it's going to stay with North Union. 21 seconds. North Union's gonna have to think about firing some threes now.
Inbound to Lindsay. Now a pass to Benedict, she's wide open. Misses it, but an offensive rebound with 14 seconds. She's on the floor and a foul will be called on Granville. It's just the second team foul though, so no free throws. But North Union will have the ball 12 seconds exactly, down six. Second foul on Aaliyah Moore. Lindsay off the inbound, 10 seconds. Now Hera fires a deep three. Off the backboard, four seconds to go. Anna Reno dribbles out the rest of the clock. Four straight Central District titles. And now a trip back to the Sweet 16 for this group of seniors. Granville will move on to face the winner of number seven, Brian, and number, or sorry, no number, seventh ranked in the state, Brian, but not number seven seeded in the tournament. Um, and Liberty Benton, so Brian and Liberty Benton, the winner of that matchup, is who Granville has next. Harper Ann Arena finishes with 26 points after having 22 in the first half. Shut down mostly in the second. Battled through a left leg injury. Came back. Granville led by as much as 12. Then North Union came back. They led by three. But the Blue Ace is able to close it out. They win 55 to 49. And it's back to back to back to back for Granville in the Central District. The district runner up, North Union. They were league champs, have the league player of the year on their squad. Seventeen and seven record. So we'll stay here with you to watch North Union get their runner-up medals here in the Central District and then as well as Granville, the opportunity for them to cut down a net for the fourth straight year, get their medals. And uh, then we're gonna try to steal Tate Moore away from his team for a couple minutes for a post-game interview. Talk about this game and the back and forth battle but then also, what's next in the Sweet 16? And doing it four times in a row, man. But I'll step aside for now. We'll let our camera guys take it away. And for both award ceremonies, this one for North Union, and then next for the district champion, Granville Blue Aces. And then we'll try to steal Tate Moore here in a few minutes.
Sets if we have to run the same one a hundred times. I'm mad that we couldn't go. I thought, we were, I thought our press was going to be fun. Wait till I make a video from Ohio State of Jesus Christ coming out of the tomb with Harper's face on it. I thought she was dead. And then she ran in. Hey, we should just run anyways.
goes. Did you already go, Lily? Margaret, yeah. She's really important. Harper's last, yeah. No, it's gonna be Kellen. Here we go, Hart. You just pull it, Harper. Let's take a bunch of pictures right here facing that way. Ladder, can the ladder stay for the pictures? Up. All right, 
right, where's that flag? Who's got the flag? Get that going. Mom and Dad. Hey, Winslet, I'm not doing nothing. Yeah, doing nothing. Like, no, you're, you're, that's crazy. That's insane. Mom, we take a dad photo.
district final game. Thank you. They got on me last time. They said it was too far away. Hey, that's all right. It's all right. Cool. Well, head coach Tate Moore is joining us with Granville Girls Basketball. Coach, how do you do it, man? Four years in a row, district champions. I mean, that's got to be pretty darn cool, right? Our seniors did it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it wasn't me. It was, it was Harper, Haley, Taylor, Leah, and Hannah. Uh, I mean, anyone that watched the game saw that. So, yeah. The players won the game, and I'm so happy. Uh, our senior class, first ever to go four for four. District, yeah. league, and never lost at home. So Harper had an excellent first half, 22 points, and then kind of shut down a little in the second half. They did, North Union did a good job doubling her and kind of making her give up the basketball. But kind of a, t a, a scary moment there in the fourth quarter. She goes down to kind of favoring that braced up left leg. I mean, what was going through your mind and, and everything kind of when that goes down and it's a tense moment in the game? I think you guys were down three at the yeah. time. I mean, walk me through that point in the game. Yeah, well, so Taylor uh, got hammered right. on, on a play. And then I thought that that's what the foul was, and, and I didn't realize Harp was hurt. And then when I see Harp hurt, I mean, and she's had knee issues, and right. I'm, I'm scared to death. So I go out there, and it's, it's first, is Harp okay? Two, how are we going to win this game without Harp? <laughs> sure. Um, but as I heard him, Steve, our trainer, uh, calm her down, and, he, and she said, I'm fine. Yeah. And he said, no, you're not. I knew Harp was going to win that battle. Yeah. So he said, look, we got to go out in the hall, and we got to go through some tests. And if you pass those tests, I'll let you back in. And I think by the time I crossed the, the sideline to get back on, Harper had already I, I, I saw you turn court. around, and she was sprinting to the scores table, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. Harper's the toughest girl I know, both physically and mentally. And uh, as soon as I heard him say that they were going to do tests, sure. Harper's going to pass. Right, yeah. Now, pre like leading up to this game, I know you you put something out on social media about the comments that North Union's coach makes uh, made saying that, you know they weren't scared of you. They, were, they wanted this challenge to face you guys. I mean, talk about, like, the battle that they gave you tonight because you guys were up 10 in the first half, um, and then they battled back. Then you kind of went up again by, I think, 8 or 10 again, and then, you know, they ended up taking the lead. I mean, they gave you guys their, their best shot tonight. I mean, like, yeah, what do you have to say about the job well, that they did credit against to you? Her. She's a good coach. They're organized. They play really hard. Their girls are really physical, mm -hmm. and that's a good basketball team. So um, I got nothing bad to say about them, and they, I think they brought their A game tonight. And uh, – Thankfully, we were able to pull it out. But, yeah, just leading up to the game, um, anytime you can get an opportunity to find an edge or get a chip on your shoulder, you're going to take it. And, yeah. uh, I don't think we had to look very far to find one sure. uh, than our own local newspaper. So. Yeah. Well, now you're on to the Sweet 16. 
So 16 are left, and you've got the winner of Liberty Benton and Brian. Do we so have a score update over there? I do not have one in front of me right now, but um, we'll, what's that? Start at, start at six. Start at All six right. o'clock. So, got to find out. You got to wait a little bit. Yeah, we had a so. uh, we had a coach's watch party the other night with some pizza and uh, hung out, and we watched both of their semifinal matchups. So, whoever wins that game is going to be really good. Uh, Liberty Benton has a girl committed to Bowling Green, um, and then Brian I think is twenty four and one, and they get after you, and they're tall and long, and they can shoot the ball. And um, so we're going to have our hands full either way, but we're so excited that we get a chance to do it. Cool, man. Well, Coach, really appreciate you stopping by. Congrats on your fourth straight district championship, man. And uh, as always, we appreciate the time, but go get them, man. Keep going. Go Aces. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining us tonight here at Central Crossing High School. Uh, Granville, they win it. They win the Central District for the fourth year in a row. Uh, so they're moving on to the Sweet 16 to take on uh, either Brian or Liberty Benton. Uh, but another game is coming up here at Central Crossing, so we'll step out of the way. And I uh, want to thank our crew tonight, Caden Casey running the iPad. Uh, Parker uh, running camera as well as our guy Sean Fisher running camera as well. But I'm Will Ford with Story Rival Sports Media signing off for now. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody.